A little better. All right. Awesome. Yeah, this is the uh, the new phone that I bought. Is the iPhone 14 Pro Plus. <clears throat> so it should be a bit of a better camera. Should be. But look who makes our stuff. <clears throat> Base man. We really don't say hello. We say Shalawan. Yeah, this is not Good Morning America, okay? I'm just telling you. This is not Good Morning America or it's Showtime at the Apollo. <clears throat> All right, we're going to get ready to go ahead and get into it. The devil is in details. Shalom. Baraka thank you, Hawa. Baraka thank you, Hawa Shai. Baraka thank you, Hawa. Baraka thank you, Hawa Shai. Call Halayla, Yahawa, Bahashem. Yahawa Shai, Bahashem. Rukwan Kadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahawa, in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahawa Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, <laughs> and double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles and great millstone. <clears throat> Coming back at you with another lesson. The devil is in the details. <clears throat> so I want to go into this and try to, I want to move fast, but at the same time, not miss any key points. And we're going to briefly go into sacrifices and the spiritual significance of them. So when you look at the C-hip or the M-O-T-B, blood is spilled during that process. So it is a transfer of blood. So this is a demonic ritual sacrificing unto devils. Because what you're saying is that the sacrifice of Yahweh Shai is not sufficient. It's not adequate. So there is a spiritual implication behind being punctured and spilling blood out for the oppressor to his system, the beast, which is a religious rite. So there's a ritual that goes with it. Whenever you are sacrificing something, there is a transfer of blood which shows allegiance to the beast, to that he, which is the Roman enterprise, the dragon. So you're showing an allegiance to him, his system, I know that makes sense. So it's deeper than just buying and selling. That's a part of it. But what you're doing essentially is saying that Yahweh Shai's bread, his manna from heaven, is inadequate. <coughs> Therefore, his blood was shed in vain. So we need to join ourselves unto our masters. That's in our law, in Deuteronomy. When we're saying we're happy serving him. So we're going to be punctured with a digital oil. Just like in the ancient world, there's a bloodshed that occurs when your ear would be bored through. So that shedding of blood is a spiritual connection, and a show of allegiance to your master. 
So it's not just saying, hey, I'm just getting a tattoo. It's deeper than that. It is a blatant display of idolatry, adultery, spiritual fornication. So the Lord has broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the ruler. <clears throat> so this puncturing, the shedding of blood, this integration into the beast is a sign of defeat. That this man is losing. So it is a last ditch effort to connect to life support, to merge man with machine. Well, this is a mayday, 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 which is an emergency call for the elites. See, the beloved brother Andre serving Yahweh Shai, Exodus 21, verse 6. <clears throat> then his master shall bring him unto the judges. He shall also bring him to the door or unto the doorpost, and his master shall bore his ear through with an oil, and he shall serve him forever. So how would you like it if your wife was being bored through by another man's rod? You would be angry. So Israel is the daughter of Zion. You're not going to just say, oh, it's not that bad. Okay? Maybe this is just a transitional phase she's going through. No, you're, you're going to want blood. <clears throat> you're going to want blood. There's nothing that can compare to the furious wrath of a man's jealous rage. Imagine that multiplied times 100 from the most high. I'm just going to smash her just for a moment and then hand her back to you with my ride. Hell, now simp is going to say, okay, well, I can work with that. That's why you simps, you are a virus on the earth. You got to go. You're not really men. You're genetically modified organisms. A simp is going to say, that's okay. Let her go. Not, not a man of the Lord. She's going to become fish food or bird food. I'm just telling you, don't take it personal, but your ass got to go. You got to go. <laughs> Let's keep going. So blood is shed when a man penetrates his wife for the first time. So that exchange consummates a marriage, a marriage, a union. So the shedding of Yahweh Shai's blood <clears throat> consummates a eternal marriage or union between the elect of the daughter of Zion and the Most High. So this is a marriage made in heaven, eternal, that shall never fade away. But the caveman's world, his dominion, it's going to pass away with a great noise. So this marriage that's been consummated between the daughter of Zion, elect, and the Most High cannot be disannulled. It is made for an eternal eternity. This is the real riding off into the sunset and living in peace and happiness forevermore. See, let's keep going. <clears throat> so the blood of the lamb has created an escape. Why well, you think the Bible says that the Lord will not put on us more than we can bear, but will create a way to escape the temptation. So that path, that lifeline, that emergency lifeguard buoy, that's being thrown into the sea is Yahweh Shai. He is the way, the truth, 
and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. So he is that lifeline when we've fallen overboard into the deep blue sea. He is our lifesaver and has consummated the marriage or the union with the beloved Father forevermore. And nothing can cut us off from him. Who can be against us when we have a permanent bond to the great creator of all things? Let's go to 1 Peter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. <clears throat> Peter, an apostle of Yahweh Shai and Bashiach to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of the Most High, the Father, through the, sanctifi through the sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and the sprinkling of the blood of Yahweh Shai, Mashiach, grace unto you, and peace be multiplied. We cannot overlook or downplay the blood, the sprinkling of the blood. Shalom, beloved brother and elder, GMS page master. For the blood, <clears throat> if it wasn't for the blood, then we would have no marriage with the Most High. We would be cut off, divorced, forsaken, and deemed cast away forever. So the blood of the marriage is a token of purity. The blood, the same blood sprinkled on the white sheets when a husband would penetrate a young damsel for the first time. The blood is a token of mercy, life, in order to continue that marriage or that relationship. Without the blood, there is no marriage or gathered together on peaceful terms and conditions. The damsel would be put to death without the token or evidence of purity. So the blood of the lamb has washed us and made us over where we are able to regain that calmly and delicate view or perspective unto the Heavenly Father appearing that we have not been touched by the gods of the other nations. We're undefiled now because of the blood of the Lamb and are donning the white robes purified and made white by this divine truth. Let's read that again. First, <coughs> First Peter 1, verse 2. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and the sprinkling of blood and the sprinkling of the blood of Yahweh Shai, Amashiach, grace unto you, and peace be multiplied. So the blood preserves us. The token of blood that's sprinkled on the white robes has sanctified his elect, has given us an opportunity to start fresh, to start over, to be undefiled despite our spiritual fornication, adultery, despite rebelling and breaking the marriage vows, the marriage contract, if it wasn't for the blood. Brother GMS Spiritual Art 144, Ephesians 1, verse 7, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according 
to the riches of his grace. So his grace is everlasting. It's a treasure to gain immortality. It's a treasure to rule over the nations forever. It's a treasure to be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. It's a treasure to live to see the day of the fall of our enemies. The beloved elder GMS Page Master, 1 Peter 1 and 19, but with the precious blood of Yahweh Shai as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. So this gives us an opportunity to start clean, to don the white robes, because we're seen through the lens of the sun. So the Most High views Israel, his elect, his elect, through his anointed one, the Messiah, the Mashiach. So he is viewing his chosen through his only begotten son. If it had not been for Yahweh Shai, we would not have an opportunity to become a people, to be noticed, to be recognized. We would be deemed forsaken and not redeemed or bought back, purchased with the precious blood of the Lamb. <clears throat> First Peter 1, verse 2 again, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Yahweh Shai Mashiach, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. So the damsel, the calmly and delicate daughter of Zion, elect, has peace with that marriage, that reunion, because of the blood of the Lamb. There is no death. There is no judgment. Because we have a reconciliation or a bridge back to the Heavenly Father. 1 Peter 1, verse 4. To an inheritance, 1 <coughs> Peter 1 and 4. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of the Most High through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. So at the last trump, at the end of the sixth trump, and the beginning of the seventh, the Lord is going to reveal his crown jewels, his chosen ones that have been preordained for salvation before the beginning or the creation of the world, before the foundation of the world, before the creation of the other nations. So his crown jewels are going to be known and are going to shine. He's going to raise up the up-and-coming kings and priests, just like Yahweh Shai was raised up, crowned, and sits or occupies an eternal throne. That joint inheritance is going to be executed on the earth. So now we have a perfect, perfect sacrifice. Now we have a better sacrifice than flesh or the earthly. Let's go to Hebrews 9 and 12. <clears throat> so we have a perfect sacrifice, the cleansing or the sanctification of the spirit. It takes an eternal spirit to do that. A perfect lamb without spot or blemish. We can't get that from killing chickens, lambs, goats. We can't get an eternal 
spiritual perfect sacrifice from a fleshly offering unless it's been purified and made perfect by the chief cornerstone, Yahabashai. So now we have a better sacrifice. See? Or the GMS Yabar Dhamma, Luke 1 and 68. Bless be the Lord, God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and have raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. So that horn represents all power. So he's going to take down the horns of the earth, the crowns of the heathen and Gentile nations. So this is a perfect offering unto the Most High without sin. It's undefiled, clean, holy, separate, made white through perfection of the Most High himself. <coughs> Hebrews 9 and 12. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place having obtained eternal redemption for us, for his crown jewels, the elect of the house of Israel, in the house of his servant David. So this house has been sanctified, holy. It is a sanctuary that's been approved of the Most High through the heavenly offering. Yahawashai, Hebrews 9 and 13. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctified to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Hamashiach, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to the Most High. Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Accepting this man's penetration into your vessel is a dead work. Putting, defiling your temple, your vessel, that's a dead work. You're sprinkling blood from your vessel unto a unholy unclean sacrifice. So you're a disannulling the marriage with Yahawashai. You're saying his blood is inadequate, insufficient. Hebrews 9 and 14 again. <clears throat> How much more shall the blood of Hamashiach, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death or the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament. They which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. So the, those that are called are preordained, predestined. His lively stones are his anointed ones that are already written in the book of life. So why rely on an earthly sacrifice to obtain a heavenly, eternal kingdom? It does not make sense. So if you're pierced or punctured through the flesh, that is temporary. It is a carnal or a 
earthly sacrifice in hopes of an eternal promise. It does not make sense. I'm a love Elder Jim S. Page Master, Romans 8 and 30. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. So the blood of the lamb is, it's priceless. It cannot be measured by man because it's of the most high, of the heavenly. So it's more than enough. It's sufficient. It exceeds our earthly expectations. Why you think that the heavens or the kingdom created, we cannot even imagine or fathom that. Somebody post that, please. That it's, it's so unimaginable. It's unfathomable because of the sacrifice that is built upon. A treasure that's priceless. It's so expensive. We cannot measure it or put a price tag on the precious blood of the Holy, of the only begotten Son of the Most High. So we cannot even imagine the promises ahead because of the price tag attached to Yahweh Shai. We need that, that scripture, Baba Kasha, who have known the debt or the glory of his riches that are promised unto us. There's one in Isaiah 66, and there's another one in 1 Corinthians 2. Why? Because the precious treasure sent from on high, Yahavashai, has created a place that's going to greatly exceed our expectations. See? Hebrews 9 and 15. <clears throat> and for this cause, and for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament that by means of death or the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. So Yahweh Shai, the promises is built upon his work, his labor, and continued through the apostles. So it's a better promise built upon a better sacrifice that's perfect. You can't compare a earthly lamb or goat to the blood of the Son of the Most High. That would make you insane to even attempt to do so. Brother Boyan Yasharala, Isaiah 66, verse 8. Who have heard such a thing? Who have seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Yeah, but we need one moment. <clears throat> so the children are the children of wisdom that are following the Lamb whithersoever he goes. Let's try Isaiah 64. Right here. Isaiah 64, verse 4. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, neither 
hath the eye seen of the Most High beside thee? What he hath prepared for him that waiteth for him. See? So this kingdom that's built upon a better promise, a better sacrifice, is going to blow our mind. It's going to greatly exceed our imagination, our expectation. See, let's read it again. <clears throat> For Isaiah 64, verse 4. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, neither have the eye seen of God besides thee what he hath prepared for him that waiteth for him. Only a perfect blood offering or a perfect sacrifice can create an eternal perfect paradise. Let's keep going. <clears throat> let's go to first, let's go back to Hebrews 9, and 17. <clears throat> Hebrews 9 and 17. For a testament is a force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. So Yahweh Shai had to break the seals of the contract to release his Holy Spirit, his word, so we can read the promises and receive them into our heart, our mind. <coughs> so now that the seals are broken through his transition into an elevated status, then he can delegate or relegate some of that inheritance now to the joint heirs, the inheritors of the better promises, eternal life, crowns of glory, occupying thrones, rulership over the nations. Let's go to 1 Peter 5, verse 5. 1 Peter chapter 5, excuse me, 1 John, 1 John 5, and five, who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth Shai is the son of God. This is he that came by water and blood, even Yahawashai Amashiach, not by water only, but by water and blood, and it is the spirit that beareth witness because the spirit is truth. So this, the water and the blood. So we are supping of his flesh, eating of his flesh and drinking of his blood. So this is purging our conscience, our mind, purifying our soul, our spirit. So that means also we are following in like manner, teaching, preaching, and making our own bodies a living sacrifice. We're not just talking the talk, but walking the walk. So we are consuming the same threat to our bodies as Yahweh Shai. So partaking in his suffering, affliction, 1 Peter 5 and 6 again. This is he that came by water and blood, even Yahweh Shai Mashiach, not by water only, but by water and blood, and it is the spirit that bear witness because the spirit is true. How do we know if we are supping with Yahweh Shai? Because Adawan Ratazan, which means Lord willing, we're teaching the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Because no lie is of the truth. 
I mean, he, one, A, <clears throat> let's say you have a ice cream sundae dessert with bananas and pineapples, strawberries, <clears throat> and all of a sudden somebody takes some poop and sprinkle it over your nice ice cream sundae. Then it's defiled. It's unacceptable. So you cannot mix something that is acceptable or clean with the defiled or the unclean. So the profane and the holy cannot mix together. It's either a nice Sunday dessert or it's trash. That's just like the elect ought to be separate. Why you think the, body, the Bible says, those that hate me, their bodies shall be scattered as dung. What is dung? Shit. So you can't mix the holy with the profane. That's why their bodies are going to be littered across the earth like dung because they are not covered by the blood of the lamb. They did not eat of his flesh and drink of his blood. The full, pure, true doctrine. Ain't no c -hip. Ain't no M-O-T-B. Esau is the Arabs. Salvation is for all nations. See? So their sacrifice is the foul, unacceptable. 1 Peter 5, verse 7. For well, there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. Somebody post John 17, verse 21 and 22, Baba Kasha. John 17, 21 and 22, Baba Kasha. 1 John 5, verse 7. 1 John 5 and 7. For well, there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. <clears throat> On one accord. If you've ever listened to a symphony, it only takes one knucklehead to throw the entire musical symphony off. Dun 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 beep. Everybody stops and looks. That's false doctrine in a nutshell. So that means they're on one accord. An accord is a musical note, a symphony, musical notes. Everything agrees with the rest of the music that's prescribed. Pre-written, that's the scriptures, prescribed, one accord. See, Brother Bion Yasharala, that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. So the apostles started off disciples, later became apostles, which means sent forth, are teaching the same thing as Yahweh Shai. It doesn't mean they became a three-headed monster and growling at everybody. It means they're on one accord, singing the same song. John 17 and 21, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. That's beautiful. See? So we're singing unto the Lord a new song. And we're all on one accord. The elect, Adawan Ratazah, I'm among that number. 
Lord willing. And it sounds irking to our spirit to hear a doctrine contrary to what the Father has written in his music. And the orchestrator of the symphony, the maestro, is Yahweh Shai. That's synchronizing this awakening. He's creating a spiritual synergy. Let's go to Isaiah 4, verse 3. <laughs> Getting ready to wrap this up. So anybody teaching them? Hey, I want to say this, by the way. We got to get out of the black connection demon. Hey, yo, we bros, dog. Hey, dog. Hey, 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 brother. Hey, black brother. You're going to die in blackness and being a black-ass African-American. Just because they look dark-skinned or have melanin, you're clinging to a fleshly, carnal, secular bonding. If you're justifying these devils, that means you're rejecting the justification through the sanctification of the blood of Yahweh Shai, trying to join together on some black shit. You're going to die as a black-ass Negro here in America. I'm just telling you, don't take it personal if you don't want to repent from being a chimp. I'm just telling you on this black shit, melanin, you see, or this beautiful black melanated goddess, the woman is God, my brother. May you die a dreadful, long-suffering, painful death, despicable and slow, okay? That's a shameful death. It's time to repent and get out of this black shit. Yeah, yo, we boys. Hey, dog. Hey, say, dog. Hey, dog. Unbelievable. <clears throat> and stop feeling sorry for them if they're going off the doctrine and trying to justify them. If they're going against Jehovah Shai, that means they're trying to crucify him or cut him in half. And you're still justifying these wicked Negroes. Isaiah 4, verse 3. And it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion and he that remaineth in Jerusalem shall be called holy. Everyone that is written among the living in Jerusalem. <coughs> so dead works. Receiving a, a ritualistic puncturing. That's a unacceptable sacrifice. You're shedding blood, aren't you? Don't you got to dab it? Don't you spill blood? So that means you're rejecting the blood shedding of Yahweh Shai and his tribulation. You're not eating of his flesh. You're supping with the beast, his system. Because you don't believe that his blood was adequate to be purchased or redeemed. For we are bought with a price, a son of the living God, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. So if you're justifying zoo animals, then you're going to die a zoo animal's death. The sword of the Lord is going to be filled with goats, rams, swine, or pigs, and wicked ass billy goats and wicked sheep. I agree with the Most High, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Hey, yo, man, that's a female, a black melanated goddess. Or are you going to die right alongside her? Or a puncture wound in her, in her forehead or in her hand? And may you two be gathered in holy matrimony, holding hands in a mass grave somewhere, dumbass. Isaiah 4 and 3. And it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion and he that remaineth in Jerusalem shall be called holy. That means separate. Even everyone that is written among the living in Jerusalem, written in the book of life before the foundation of the world. So who can separate us from the love of the living power? Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, or Kwa Kadash. 
we got to reject leaning on the staff of the oppressor. Andre serving Yahweh Shai. Isaiah 36, verse 6. Lo, thou trustest in the staff of this broken reed on Egypt, wherein if a man lean, it will go into his hand and pierce it. So is Pharaoh king of Egypt to all that trust in him. So if you trust on Massa, you're going to die a slave death. Let's go to Isaiah 4 and 4. When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. Well, the spirit is a fiery flame that ignites our lamp of wisdom and that purges the old man and that cleanses the earth of its wicked abominations, idols, false worships, abominable sacrifices, unacceptable sacrifices. I, I got to go into this. When we're talking about a sacrifice, it's also what comes out of our mouth. Somebody posted, I think it's Psalms 18. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you, O power. Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. So if you're teaching a false doctrine, unacceptable offering. It's a blemish lamb. So it's not congruent or it's not consistent with the teachings of Yahweh Shai. So it's not of his blood, of his spirit. It's unacceptable. It's like taking a swine or a pig and trying to say, here you go, Lord, take this burnt up ass pig with a broke ass leg. It doesn't work that way. So our doctrine got to be sound. When you enter into the Lord's sanctuary, this truth, this congregation. <coughs> so that's also an, a sacrifice a offering. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you, O power. So it must align with the gospel of Yahweh Shai, Mashiach, not Jebus Cross. That's of the devil. That's teaching another gospel. Isaiah 4, verse 4. When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Lyon and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. Well, the eternal spirit is an eternal flame. It purges the old man and it renews the new foundation or the new house, the new sanctuary, the new kingdom, the new heaven, and the new earth. So under the new covenant, there is no more sin of the house of Israel. There is no more deviating from the Most High's will. We're not under the new covenant. We're in a transitory grace period. Thank you, the water. Brother Israelite seeking salvation. Psalms 19, verse 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In thy sight. That don't mean sitting on the sideline eating a damn Snickers candy bar in thy sight, in thy sanctuary, thy holy place. So teaching, preaching, meditating on prophecy, helping to edify, 
and feed the lambs. Not sitting on the sideline clapping like a black seal and trying to rely on blackness. Hey, yo, hey, dog. Hey, dog. Say, dog. Let's close out here. <clears throat> Hebrews 10 and 28. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Hebrews 10 and 29. Of how much sorer punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who have trodden. See, so accepting that C-hip or the MOTB is trampling on the blood of the lamb, stomping on it with your dirty feet or muddy boots. That's a death sentence. I'm just telling you, don't take it personal. Brother Zadok, I'm Ram, house of David. Sirach 11 and 1. Wisdom lifteth up the head of him that is low degree and maketh him to sit among great men. So wisdom occupies the throne. See? So nothing is above wisdom. Wisdom is exalted over the nations over the kingdoms, so it cannot be trumped or triumphed over. It is eternal. It is a solid foundation. It is sure. <coughs> the water, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. Hebrews 10 and 28. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who have trodden under foot the Son of God and have counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and have done despite unto the spirit of grace. So you're slapping the hand of the Most High extending his hand out to you. You're slapping his hand. So he's extending a peace offering. A, a, what is it called when you stop fighting against your enemies? A ceasefire. A peace treaty under the new covenant. The Lord is extending his hand unto you through his mouthpiece and through his prophets. Yeah, it's a truce or a ceasefire agreement or peace treaty. But wicked chimpanzees is slapping a hand that feeds them. If you've ever fed a zoo monkey, they, they scratch you and slap your hand when you're trying to feed an animal. That's the two turds. Not much difference. We don't cast our pearls, pearl, pearls to swine. <laughs> so this is a a grievous offense, punishable, punishable by death. This is heavy. Hebrew, I'm going to read it again. Hebrews 10 and 29. Yeah, monkeys will poop at you, throw it at you. Right after they poop, they'll throw it at you. Right after they then scratch your hand, after you try to feed them, you become the enemy. You can't feed the animals. We got to put a sign up in front of the sanctuary. Don't feed the animals or try to cast your pearl to swine. They'll just grunt and pass gas at you and not even thank you or thank the spirit and power that sent you. Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Let's read this again. <clears throat> Hebrews 10 and 29. See? Of how much sorer punishment suppose ye Shall he be thought worthy who have trodden underfoot the son of the most high and have counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and have done despite unto the spirit of grace? I'm going to go ahead and get punctured and shed my own blood because Yahweh Shai's blood was not good enough. So I'm going to take this man's stamp and let his ride defile my temple. 
Or are you going to die with this animal, this great red beast? Hebrews 10 and 30. For we know him that have said, Vengeance belongeth unto me. I will recompense, saith the Lord, and again the Lord shall judge his people. So the two-thirds judgment starts with you. All right? The circus animals and circus clowns running around like wild jungle creatures. Judgment starts with you. The Lord is raising up men of a fierce spirit, not trying to connect on blackness. Say, dog, we boys. That ain't going to work. The Lord has put a fierce right-hand spirit full of the fury and power and vengeance from on high. Yahweh by Shem, Yahweh shot. If you're still on that what's up, dog mess on blackness, you are part of the circus ring that's going on, causing confusion. So you are a rebel and guilty as charge, punishable by death, because you're not covered under the blood. You don't like the covering of the Most High. Let's close out here. So when you read that the Lord shall judge his people, judgment starts in his sanctuary. The circus clowns and jungle creatures, jungle creatures. John 17 and 9. I pray. For <coughs> John 17 and 9. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. So he's only dealing with those that the Most High has put in his hand. So that is a sad number. Preset, prescribed, pre written, pre ordained. That's who he's praying for. Those whose names are written in the book of life. The beloved brother, GMS, Thy High Tower, 144, James 4 and 7. Submit yourselves, therefore, to the Most High. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Take that you device and shove it. We're not going to allow ourselves to be penetrated and commit adultery against the Most High, against our Heavenly Father, against the husband. So we're going to remain faithful and not be compromised or defiled by women which is alternative doctrines, another way, or trying to seek and determine or establish a replacement theology or replacement salvation. John 17 and 9. Got to wrap this up. <coughs> John 17 and 9. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. So he's glorified through his witnesses that have drank his blood and ate his flesh, teaching and suffering patiently the path of Shai. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are one. One body, one spirit, joined together in a marriage. So we are supposed to submit to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh not our slave masters. A lot of our wives go to work and become a good girl wearing a white dress and holding her hands in her in between her thighs, real innocent looking, giggling, real submissive and passive. But when she come home, see, 
So a lot of Jakes are only submissive unto the oppressor because he has the military might. But his horses are flesh and not spirit. Temporary. So this is a temporary or temporal plane. Imagine your woman becoming submissive to the same man that took her captive. Took her captive, she's smiling and eating Cheetos with this nigga. When you peep through the door, <coughs> you peep through the door, she's doing all types of stuff that she didn't even do for you. You didn't even know she can stretch that far or was that flexible. So the most high is a jealous power and you're gonna die with your master and oppressor that you're submissive to. So we submit to the most high through our husbandmen, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai is married to the church, the daughter of Zion. John 17, 18 and 21, that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. <coughs> well, this marriage cannot be this and all. It cannot be defiled by another doctrine, by another entity outside of our husband, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. So if we let someone into this sanctuary or into the marriage chamber, then the marriage reunion becomes disrupted, unaccepted, defiled, and unacceptable. All right? We're not into twosomes or uh, threesomes, uh, excuse me. We're not into defiling what the Most High has made clean and holy. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, or Kwakadash. Double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad and double, out, double honor to our beloved elders and apostles of Great Millstone. We got next, Lord willing. Barakathon, Bam Yasharala, and Abad Babal. Tabernacle of David is being raised up, restored, raised from the ashes of the graves. Shalom. Bam Yasharala.